So let's ask ChatGDP where LogiGI was born. ChatGDP doesn't know anything about LogiGI, and fortunately, it says so. That's actually pretty good. Much better than coming up with a made-up answer, which it does also sometimes. So that's okay, it doesn't know it. How do you tell it? Well, okay, let's be a bit more generic. Let's ask ChatGDP a, a more general question. For example, let's hear about famous Chinese female physicists in general. And here we go, we get five answers. The first one is great, Wu Xianjiang. The second one, that's not female. Number three is a great scientist, but she has nothing to do with China. Number four, I couldn't find anything about her. There is a person with a slightly similar name, but it seems to be made up from her. Number five is good. So, Three out of the two, uh, three out of five answers were simply wrong. If you ask me, that's unacceptable. But you know what does work? I can ask ChatGDP to write me a Sparkle query for Wikidata that shows a map of the birthplaces of female Chinese physicists. And ChatGPT complies. It does so out of the box, zero shot training. The query can be directly copied and pasted into the Wikidata query service. And without any changes, it can be used to produce a view of a map of China with the birthplaces highlighted. I get 14 results and all of these are correct. Not just two out of five, but every single one. And that shows us a way how to combine large language models and knowledge graphs. Wikidata is an open knowledge graph that anyone can edit. It was launched in 2012, 11 years ago, and provides structured linked data and persistent identifiers for millions of topics of interest. Wikidata is entirely multilingual, as we will see in a moment and it is used extensively by Wikipedia. And many, many other projects, companies, developers, such as Google, Apple, Microsoft, Lufthansa, the BBC, and many more. Also, and in particular, by research teams all around the world. Google Scholar lists more than 26,000 research papers on top of Wikidata. Let's dive into how Wikidata looks like, but we are going to start with Wikipedia. This is the English Wikipedia article about a Chinese physicist, Lu Shijia. There is also a Chinese article about Lu Shijia. Note that the content of the two articles is actually entirely independent of each other. Sure, you will see a lot of overlap, hopefully, but if you fix or add something in the Chinese article, it won't automatically propagate to the English version, or the French version, or the Indonesian version. These articles are all written independently of each other. This is Wikidata's page on Lucidia. Right on the top you see the persistent identifier Wikidata has assigned to Lucidia, her QID. Q82889814. We see structured data about her, that she's a human, her picture, let's scroll, her country of citizenship, date and place of birth and death, her father, etc. We have all this structured information about Lu Shijia. But all of these things, the Suzhou prefecture, Beijing, her father, Li Guangxi, those are not just strings. Those are other items in Wikidata with their own persistent identifier, with their own QID. And because it is entirely structured, we can simply switch the language of this view from English to Chinese. And not only read it in Chinese, but also edit it in Chinese. The interface is entirely multilingual. No language is our primary language. Both um, for reading and for editing, it's entirely multilingual. 
And this not, doesn't work only in English and Chinese, but it is available in 496 languages. How many websites do you know that are available in almost 500 languages? A bit further down on the page, we can find more statements about Lu Jia. In particularly identifiers in other knowledge bases, in authority files and other websites. This allows Wikidata to act like a modern Rosetta Stone, where you can translate from an identifier in one knowledge source to identifiers in other knowledge sources. But unlike the Rosetta Stone, we map not, we map not only between three different representations, but we connect more than 8,000 knowledge sources, authority files and catalogs with each other. Wikidata is easily the largest hub of shared identifiers on the web, allowing you to collect data from billions of pages. Wikidata describes more than 106 million items with more than one and a half billion statements. Wikidata is, like all our projects, driven by volunteers and we have more than 23,000 monthly contributors on Wikidata. Overall, more than half a million people have contributed to Wikidata so far, a number I personally find absolutely astonishing. When I started Wikidata, I would not have believed that there are that many people in the world interested in contributing to structured data. Wikidata has seen almost 2 billion edits so far, making it by far the most edited wiki in the world, easily beating the English Wikipedia, which is double as old. Wikidata also sees about 15 million Sparkle queries every day. Sparkle is a query language for knowledge graphs. Wikidata Sparkle Endpoint has the ability to create astonishing and interactive visualizations of the Wikidata data. Unfortunately, it is also at high at risk. If you want to work with us on our Sparkle Endpoint, we could use the help. Here are some results from the Sparkle Endpoint. And mind you, this is not being done in code. These are just the results from the Wikidata Sparkle query server directly. Here we see paintings by Vermeer. We ask for where the painting is hosted. We ask for the geo coordinates of the host, like the museum, and then we load the picture from Wikimedia Commons and visualize all of this on top of a map from OpenStreetMaps. Just a query to Wikidata. Next query. This here is a fully interactive graph of the etymology of the English word water and its cognates going back to Old English and eventually Proto-Indo-European, and all the other languages that derive a word from the same root. Next query. I love this one. This is an example of a federated query, spanning not just the Wikidata knowledge graph, but also the one by OpenStreetMaps. So OpenStreetMaps also has a sparkle endpoint. The query is all ATMs in Munich belonging to the interbank banking network. So Wikidata doesn't have the location of the ATMs, but OpenStreetMap does. What Wikidata has is the knowledge of which banks belong to which banking network. We can now, in a federated query, and completely online, without writing a single line of code, just with a Sparkle query, combine these two knowledge bases on the fly and display the result as an interactive map in the browser. I think that is pretty cool. Can you do that with the knowledge in your organization? Next query, coming back to our example, here we see the academic genealogy of Lu Jia, her doctoral advisor, their doctoral advisor, and so on, back through the centuries. Again, this is a fully interactive graph. The images come from Wikimedia Commons, the data from Wikidata, and most of these peoples you can read more about in Wikipedia. But let's change the topic. We all know what the elephant in the room is. Large language models. You all have heard and probably used ChatGDP. ChatGDP and other large language models are currently all the hype. 
Everyone is looking into them. Everyone is working with them. Everyone is asking, given LLMs, do we even still need things such as knowledge graphs? When I was at Google six or seven years ago, I worked on that Google knowledge graph and I was asked the same question. It was pretty obvious that this question was coming. Let me take you to the answer that I gave back then. It hasn't changed since then, actually. So let's ask ChatGDP where Luigi Jia was born. ChatGDP doesn't know anything about Luigi Jia, and fortunately, it says so. That's actually pretty good. Much better than coming up with a made-up answer, which it does also sometimes. So that's okay. It doesn't know it. How do you tell it? Well, okay, let's be a bit more generic. Let's ask JGDP a, a more general question. For example, let's hear about famous Chinese female physicists in general. And here we go. We get five answers. The first one is great. Wu Xianjiang. The second one? That's not female. Number three is a great scientist, but she has nothing to do with China. Number four, I couldn't find anything about her. There is a person with a slightly similar name, but it seems to be made up from her. Number five is good. So three out of the two, uh, three out of five answers were simply wrong. If you ask me, that's unacceptable. But you know what does work? I can ask ChatGDP to write me a Sparkle query for Wikidata that shows a map of the birthplaces of female Chinese physicists. And ChatGPT complies. It does so out of the box, zero shot training. The query can be directly copied and pasted into the Wikidata query service. And without any changes, it can be used to produce a view of a map of China with the birthplaces highlighted. I get 14 results and all of these are correct. Not just two out of five, but every single one. And that shows us a way how to combine large language models and knowledge graphs. Before we dive deeper into that, let's quickly finish our survey of symbolic data we have available from the Wikimedia projects. Do you remember this query result? It was showing the etymology of the English word water. What's interesting about this is that we don't look at ontological information about water. When does it freeze? What is the chemical composition, etc. But we are looking at the word water, at the English word water. In Wikidata, in addition to the ontological information about things, we also aim to collect data about every word in every language. Here, for example, about the English word water, where you can see the etymological information. And we also have information about its forms. Now, in English, nouns are not particularly interesting with regards to forms. They usually only have two forms, a singular and a plural. It's more interesting in some other languages. For example, here in Estonian, where the word vesi has 36 different forms, according to Wikidata, of which we show six here. Here is the Chinese character uh, word for water, shui, sorry for my pronunciation. We see usage examples, we list senses, there are eight senses for this character in Wikidata, and the senses in turn may connect to the ontological knowledge base. Here we see, for example, that the first sense connects to the items for water and liquid water. So we connect words in many different languages to the senses in the Wikidata knowledge graph, a crucial step for symbolic semantic computation. The lexicographical database started quite a bit later than the topology database, so it's not as far advanced. As of now, we have more than 1.1 million lexemes or words in Wikidata in more than a thousand languages, spotting more than 12 and a half million different forms and close to 400,000 senses. That's Wikidata, offering an ontological and lexicographical knowledge graph. 